And right now outside our Amherst studios, 48 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. I'm Tyler Samer for News Radio 930 WBEN and WBEN.com. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at News Radio 930. It's time to talk taxes. New friends, new opportunities, new partners. EG Tax. It's Ask the Tax Lady with Esther Gullius and EG Tax on News Radio 930 WBEN. To reach Esther now, call 803 0930. Toll free at 1 800 616 9236. And cell calls are free at Star 930. And now, live from the WBEN studios, it's Esther Gullia. Hey, everybody, this is the tax lady, and this is tax season, and we want to help you from EG Tax. Um, and this is kind of our um, beginning uh, of our experiment here. I've been on uh, uh, WBEN here in Buffalo on the radio for like 15, 16 years, and we, we just had a brainstorm because we wanted, to do, uh, we wanted to do a TV show. And we said, well, what if we just tape the radio show? Because during tax season, we don't have a lot of extra time. So right. we are also aired on uh, D- uh, WBBZ. WGUF in Florida. All right, WG- well, let's do WBBZ. Right. WBBZ Channel 5, uh, Tuesdays at 6.30, is the TV show, which is really just a replay of the radio show. That's but right. But it's so cool. So if you call in, you'll get to hear your voice on TV, so um, if you're if you're somebody that likes uh, Ask the Tax Lady and you didn't get it the first go around, you can do it a second go around. And for those uh, people that uh, we have in Arizona and in Naples, we're on WGUF, WGUF in uh, Naples, Florida, and so um, that's that airs on Saturday at four o'clock. Right, 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 a little an hour after ours, and so if you're going to call in, you got to call in an hour prior. For right. A so anyway, and enough of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we just it's such it's so exciting because um, it's wonderful to be able to help people. And by the way, this is Tiffany Fabian. Hey there. And Esther. so yeah, it's cool. Now and people Chris, can see you. Yes, and Chris is, is at our training is at our yearly training right now. We have 150 people, and we're teaching them uh, again tax changes and electronics and. We had lunch. And, and even, so. you know, even just like uh, the credit card machines this year with yep. the sliding, of, the slotting of the credit cards, you know. Yep. Anyway, I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on cell phone. And if you're calling from Toronto or outside the area, the toll free number here uh, in studio is 1 800 616 9236. 1-800-616-9236. So whether you're calling from Arizona or from Florida or from Buffalo or from Toronto, we certainly would uh, love to help you here on Ask the Tax Lady. Okay, so here's our game plan. What we're going to do is we're going to kind of um, to to keep everybody so they understand about the ins and outs of taxes. We're going to start off with why is a filing status important? Yep. And it looks like it's so easy. It's those five boxes at the top. And who cares what box you check? Right. Right. It's so funny. Today we had um, one of our assistant district manager and she did common mistakes, common letters that we get in the summertime. And one of the letters that we often get is people doing the wrong filing status. Right. And so it's so important. I mean, I think Karen made a really good example. If um, I unfortunately have a a client who's married and her husband passed away and she has two children. So for 2015, she can still do married filing joint. He passed away in 15. But the next couple of years, she can do married filing, uh, qualifying qualifying widower widower with with dependent kids. But here's some real figures, and I think there's nothing that talks like numbers. And I know not everybody likes numbers. I love numbers. But let's say that you had... um, uh, you were a single woman, and maybe your brother, who's disabled, is living with you, and you make $40,000, and you think to yourself, well, I'm just single. I don't think I can claim my brother because he has SSD, right. and I don't think I can claim him. And you just file. You file in your tax return. You take your standard deduction of 6300 and your personal exemption of 4050 and your taxable income is 29640 and so your tax bill is 3990 Right. Okay? But the truth is, if you maintain, because your brother is disabled and he's a, a relative, 
and he lives with you all year, if you're maintaining over 50% of his support, then you can claim him as a dependent, which then changes your filing status yep. from single to head of the household. Yep. So this lady would then get a 9250 standard deduction. She'd get $8,100 in personal exemptions, and her tax bill would drop down to 2744 So she saves $1,246. I, I, I mean, I... I would rather have twenty six hundred and forty. I I did. Um, I, I was doing a, a client of mine, and she. I, I said, "Come see me instead of going to the competitor." And so she has two, three disabled sisters and brothers who live with her, and the competitor was doing her single for all the years and but, didn't take the and didn't take the head of household or and, the exemption or all or the, the exemption. Dependent. So I amended the last three years of returns, and she got a boatload of money from the federal and the state. But the sad year thing is the statute of limitations is. Only three years, so she was out two the years. The money. Well, now let's take the same situation um, where it's a brother living with a sister. If this is a disabled brother, uh, and under the age of seventeen, he's considered a child. Right. And so she would get the child tax credit, which would be another thousand dollars. Right. And potentially, if it's considered to be her child, the additional. And child she tax might. Credit. And she might qualify for the earned income credit not with forty thousand dollars but right. she might get the earned income credit so yeah, yeah. um uh, you know the whole thing is the filing status is so important it is so important and it's so easy to make a mistake when you're looking at right filing and status. when you just check that little box now the other thing is the filing status determines your tax rate it determines the phase outs of deductions yep. it determines the alternative minimum tax computation and subtraction so all of that is really really important and so what you have to ask yourself is is there somebody am, am i single is there somebody living with us for instance you might have your um, maybe you're a couple um that has your your son's girlfriend living with you because maybe her mom and dad got mad at you and she lived with you the whole year that person might be your dependent yep. if she lived with you the For whole, the whole year and she didn't have income over four thousand and fifty dollars another thing is i see this very often too um a, a child who comes in who's in college and she or he will claim themselves when the truth is the mom or dad can claim the college student to the age of 24 as long as they're a full-time student for at right least but you know what happens is mom and dad w w the kid will say i want the child tax credit i mean the, the american operating right. tax credit and Really, the parents are giving up $2,500 to let the kid yep. get 1000 Yep, because the kid isn't entitled to the refundable portion. Right. I'm Master awesome. Williams, the tax lady, 8030930, 8030930, star 930. And a cell phone, we have Ed and Tonawanda holding. Hi, Ed. How can we help you? Okay. Uh, yes, Esther, I have a, the following question. Yep. Uh, a bank will give you an, a cash award. For example, if you use your uh, credit card, your Visa card for... Um, that's X number of dollars you've spent on it. My question is, you never get any statement from the bank as to the amount of the cash award that you received. Mm -hmm. Do you have to claim that no. amount? No, you don't. Now, you don't. If, if you get, like for instance, let's say the bank is doing something like, if you come in, we're going to give you a $100 bonus for opening up an, uh, an account. That is going to be taxable income. But right now, the the paybacks that you're getting basically is a return of your own money, and so it's not taxable. So that isn't Pretty taxable. Cool. But if they give you a bonus or a toaster or they give you a new computer, you're, you're going to get a 1099 for that. So I was under the impression that you had to claim this on line 21 nope, it's, as it's other income. Not taxable, Ed. And if you've been claiming it, you don't have to. Well, thank you very much. You're very welcome, Ed. Bye-bye. Actually, that, I've gotten that question a lot of times, and that's a really good question. Yeah, because basically they're giving you back the money that you gave to right. them. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on a cell phone. You can call us on the toll-free number, which is 1-800-616-9236. 9236. If you're out of the area, we're going to take a short break. We'll be back on the other side with your questions and some more tax information. Thank you. Let me tell you how it will be. That's the Beatles. That is. And, and you know what it is? The tax man. One, one for you, 19 for me. It's the tax man. <laughs> 
I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax, joined in studio here uh, with Tiffany Fabian. We're launching this new television program on WBBZ, so it's just kind of a recording of our radio show. And, of course, if you're watching on BBZ, we're on WBEN uh, radio at uh, Saturdays at 3 o'clock, yeah, 3 to 4. Not to mention all of our... 15 years, you know. On, on Saturday, all of our offices open, and it's that That's time That's right, and that year. time, we're open uh, starting this week, 9 to 9, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 on Saturday. Once all the W-2s are out, we exchange, we have, we're open 9 to 9, Monday through yep. Saturday. 29 area locations. We've got a new one in New Fane. And, and uh, we also have our office, because for those people listening in, in Naples, our office in Naples is at 4... 1450 Airport. Airport Pulling Road. We're right across the street from Tamiami Ford. That's so cool. And so for us in, in Buffalo in the snow, uh, it's nice to think Too that bad. there's something warm somewhere, <laughs> right? Okay, I'm Esther Golias, the tax lady, 8030930. 8030930, star 930 on a cell phone. We're talking about filing statuses, and I want you to know here's some other situations where people make mistakes. Getting married late in a the year. They, they say, oh, Oh, we just got married in November. I don't know if we should file a joint return. And the only way you know, quite frankly, is to do it both ways. Right, right. And the truth is you have two options. You can do married filing joint or married filing separate. And those point. are the only two <laughs> options. You can't say you're single once you're married. And that right. that also kind of parlays with same-sex unions, which was just made uh, the law of the land this year. And so states like Florida that didn't have uh, same-sex marriages, now that would be something that would be identified. And so, right. uh, you know, you, and you can't pretend you're single if you're married. That's right. That's uh, another right. thing is uh, having a dependent relative living with you to make sure that you get the head of the household uh, filing status. And Another situation, if a couple, let's say, are not getting along, he left the home before June. She has children in her home. She's been supporting the household. Even though they aren't filing together and they aren't legally divorced, they, they get, get to, to file. She house. gets to file head of house. Right. It's so funny. I had a caller just, I was at the office yesterday, and I had a caller who called in it. And she said, I have a question. She goes, my husband and I are estranged. He moved out in October. And so I heard about the head of household filing status, but unfortunately, was she October. can't. It was October. Right. Right. And so <clears throat> that's a problem. Um, and then I want to say why you said sometimes people getting married can be good or bad. And so the truth is, a lot of times when you wait till November, you have to do married filing joint or married filing separate. And so usually a lot of times the answer is different. And so maybe they should have got married in the beginning of the year. I don't know what you were heading. Well, I know. But I mean, people think if they get married in November, they get to allocate but they everything. Can't. You don't allocate. Right. It's like all or nothing at all. I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 and a cell phone. And we'll go to Marion and Williamsville. Hi, Marion. How can we help you? Oh, hi there. Um, I just want to know, uh, I'm working and I collect Social Security. I don't have any deductions, and every year I, see, I pay around $2,000 taxes, and I'm wondering if I'm doing the right thing. Well, and, uh, tell me, you're, you're on Social Security, so you must yes. have some other kind of income. She's working. I'm working. All right, so okay. you have you you have Social Security and, and, and wages, Have you correct? reached full retirement age, Marion? Yes, I'm. You know what? My birthday's today. I'm 90. Oh, oh my gosh! gosh. Happy and birthday! I'm working, working full time now. There's a great thing. Yeah, isn't you've it? reached wow. full okay. retirement age. So you're taking out your RMDs every year, right? What are they now? Required minimum distribution. Do you have any? Yes, I have. Yes. All right. So that's. So here's the thing. The reason you're probably paying taxes. Are you having anything withheld? out of your Social Security or out of your Not RMDs? Of, I didn't have anything out of my Social Security. I do have, I, I think I don't have enough taken out of my paycheck. Okay, so, so what somebody. you might want to do, Marion, mm -hmm. is you can call us at the office uh, mm -hmm. at 632-7886, that's area code uh -huh. 716, uh -huh. and let's look at what your withholding is, Will, and then we'll kind of cue you as to what you should have withheld out of your Social Security or out of your uh, IRA distribution so that you don't owe at the end of the year. Because if you owe more than $1,000, they penalize you. Yeah, and you can do something called a W-4V. It's a voluntary withholding for Social Security. 
And so that might be a really good idea. And that way you won't be penalized. And, of course, on your state return, you're not going to owe any uh, taxes because Social Security is not taxable. Yeah, right. Okay. And I think okay. Esther had a good idea taking some more out of your RMDs is right. a good idea. Well, well you well, want to you, you want to make something. sure you do your RMDs, you know. Okay. You know, I do that. No, I know I do that. Okay. Uh, but uh, I thought maybe I'm just not taking enough cuz I, I really don't And again, and again, I don't have any deductions to Okay. Do. And and at 90 you probably don't have a mortgage and you can't put no, money into an IRA I really have anymore. No, nothing to deduct. Right. Yeah. So, so give right, it, give us a call and, and we'll work it out we'll for you. See what happens. Okay, my dear. Bye bye. Happy Congratulations. birthday. Congratulations. And she's working. Full time, she said. That a girl. That's great. I'm Master Gullius, the tax lady, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on a cell phone. And our toll free number is 1 800 616 92. Three oh, six, right? Nine two three six. Nine two three six. Okay, we're gonna go back to the phones and talk to Andy. Hey, Andy, how can we help you? Hi, Esther. I have a question. I just received in the mail a check from the New York State for one hundred twenty-eight dollars. Yep. It was labeled as a refund of property. property taxes. Right. And I'm calling about the tax implications of that since I do itemized deductions. Okay, so when when you do your tax return, Andy, you want to make sure that when you're doing your 2016 return, did you get a refund last year in 2015? Yes. Okay, so you're going to adjust the property taxes that you paid as an itemizer by whatever the rebate was, and that net amount is what you're going to take as an itemized deduction. So in other words, you're going to take a little bit less property taxes on the right. Schedule A this year. You're going to minus it by that one hundred and twenty dollars. Right. But it's going to be it's going to be by the rebate you got in two thousand and fifteen. Esther's right. Okay. Yeah, I don't report it until tw- until the twenty sixteen. Okay. So here's this: in two thousand fifteen, did you get a re- a rebate on your taxes? In the mail, a check in, in the 2015. mail. In two thousand fifteen. Oh, I, I don't believe so. Okay, then if you didn't, there's nothing to do on the two thousand fifteen return. On two sixteen is when you're going to make the adjustment. Okay. Well, I get a. Uh, any kind of 1099 or any kind of no, you from won't the, from the state. You mm-hmm. won't. You just have to be an honest person. That's all. Oh, we got to remember that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Thank you very all much. All right. Thank you. Good question. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax. We are um, our. This is our maiden voyage on WBBZ. That's right. Uh, Tiffany I, Fabian. I couldn't wear my PJs today. My onesie. I tell you, like I said I was telling Vito, who is our uh, our videographer producer producer, that uh, I never get dressed up to do the radio show because I look pretty bad you usually have jeans and galoshes (laughs) and all that good stuff all right let's go back to the phones and we got Charlotte hey Charlotte how can we help you I um well my husband passed away last July and uh, I'm 62 Uh, I was going to uh, they sent me in to see if I could collect Social Security but I make too much money Mm -hmm. I changed my I think it's called the Mm W-2s Um, W-4. And filing, or is that what it's W-4? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm filing uh, zero, uh, but whenever it seems like my paycheck comes around, they're just taking an exorbitant amount of money out of me. All right, so let me ask you, Charlotte. You don't have any children at home, right? No, I do not. And there's nobody that you're maintaining support for besides no. you and your husband. And no. he passed away this June, correct? No, July, July. of 14. July of this year. 14. 14. Last oh, in 2014. Year. All right, yeah. so you're changing then from married filing a joint return to single. And so what happens, just like we were talking about filing status, is you will pay more because you are a single taxpayer than if you were married filing a joint return. Your standard deduction gets smaller, and you're, you lost that second personal exemption. Cool. So, again, what I'd suggest, if you want, there's no charge. You can call us at the office on Monday, and we'll look at your W-4 to make sure that they're, you're withholding it at, at Char- the correct Charlotte, amount. Charlotte, are you, are, you, sorry, are you an itemizer? Do you have property tax? and mortgage interest? I have, um, well, it was in my husband's name, and now it's now in my name right. at home. Uh, unfortunately, um, well, actually, fortunately, I uh, just got paid off for a home that we had okay. uh, for a rental, and I... Wait, did you uh, just sell the, sh- the rental, Charlotte? this year, yes. Okay, so, so th- that's something you have to plan for Capital in 2016 gains. because you have to pay the taxes on that sale, too. So yeah. really, you really need some planning. Do now, you, you, you are too. allowed to put money into an IRA, so that might help you well, on see, your... That's it, what I usually do. I usually do the max, which I think was 6500 Right, uh, all the previous years, and I usually do a traditional. Okay, so and that that'll help this year. And you may 
find that you'll do better instead of if you haven't been itemizing this year because your 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 standard deduction is lower you might do better off itemizing so you want to make sure you try that too i think she should call us okay and take I will, the paper. Uh, can i have your number again sure please? Area code 716-632-7886. And you can also go to our website at egtax.com. Okay. Thank Thanks, you Charlotte. So sorry. All right. Sorry okay. to hear about your husband. Okay. Let's see. We got time for a quick one with Sherry. Hey, Sherry. How can we help you? Hi. Good afternoon. Good my, afternoon. My question is this. Um, I'm, we're married, but we have lived in two separate households since 2008. Okay. We're still legally married, no separation or mm -hmm. anything. We always file jointly mm -hmm. and married. Mm -hmm. But I always feel that it would be better if we could file separate for me because, one, I'm head of the household here. My son is with me full time. How old is he, Sherry? Fifteen. And you've never, and you've never filed head of the household? No, I've never filed head of the household. All right, now listen to Auntie Esther, dear. Mm -hmm. How long have you guys been living separately? 2008. Since 2008. All right, so... Too bad we didn't have this conversation before because you are entitled, you you work, correct, Sherry? I work full time, yeah. All right, may I ask approximately what your income is? About 60000 maybe okay. a little bit more. All right, so you're not going to get the earned income credit, but you certainly are able to qualify for head of the household, and you can claim your son as a dependent. Now, what, what you, but you guys have been married filing a joint return, correct? Yes. So you concern, could oh, you could have filed head of the household. Now, if are you two kind of friendly? You and your your. We uh, are. We we get along very well, and that's part. All right. Of the well, problem. that may that may be a problem if you don't. I, I mean, it may be better for you to be head of the household, but not so good for him because he'd have to file marriage separate. So what I suggest you do is call us on Monday. I always run and the let's, numbers. And let's ways. um and let's uh. Look and see what would happen if you amend those returns and get your and see if you don't get some money back. But it could kind of ruin your relationship with your estranged husband. So that's well, the that's the fly in the ointment. Had it worked out that we filed together and then we split. But here's here's what I'm concerned about. I always file zero, so I have the most taken out all year. He claims one. He was also unemployed part of this past year. And I don't take child support of that. And we just split the refund. I well, have a mortgage. He does not. So it so I think it I would sounds to me do better. It sounds to me like Sherry, head of the household, is going to be better for you. I have another client. I do the same thing. I run the numbers, and then she gives him a little bit of the excess, and they still have an amicable relationship. There you go. Mm -hmm. Right. So, okay. Well, thank share you the very wealth. much. I appreciate it. All right. Help. Thank you, All Sherry. Right. Bye. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on a cell phone. We're going to take a, a break for the news. We'll be right back. Let me tell you how it will be. I'm Esther Gullius, the Just tax lady. Team for, for me. Ain't that the truth? Because. Somebody's the tax man, but I'm the tax lady. <laughs> and you're the tax lady's vice president uh, from EG Tax, and we're here to help you. 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on a cell phone. Toll free, 1 800 616 9236. If you're calling from Toronto or Florida, or Arizona, and and for those of you that are going to be watching us on WBBZ, when you call in today, you get to be on you get to be on TV too. Pretty your, cool. Your voice does. Right, right. right. And and then I, that last. Oh, caller, oh yeah, we want to talk about her. I just, I just wanted, wanted to say. Make, right, go on. That I just wanted to say before you said those are really important questions that she's asking, and, and so you right. But to here's say. the thing: this the reason the last caller could file head of the household is because of two, three things. She has a child that's her dependent that she's maintaining the support, right. and her ex-husband's been out of the house for more than six months. And so, even though technically they should be either married separate or married joint, she falls into a special situation right. where she gets to be head of the household. He, on the other hand, not so good. Not so so good. that's why their relationship could be all right. messed up. And then they'd have to blame me. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to be blamed for divorces. <laughs> all right, let's go back to the phones. Hey, Tom, how can we help you? Uh, Esther? Yes, sir. Hey, Esther, about four, I'm, I'm 64 disabled on a SSD. And I get a small pension. Okay. Now, I'm, I, about four years ago, they told me I didn't have to file no more. 
because my income is like $6,800 a year on my pension and my Social Security and taxable. All right. Are you, sing- are you single, Tom? Yes. All right. Because you're retired on a disability pension, uh-huh. your income is, can be reclassified as wages. So you're going to uh-huh. qualify for an earned income credit. So even though you don't have to file, you want to file because you have like $400 for the last three years coming back. Up to the age of 65. Right. Oh, really? Yeah. So, you know, sometimes you call somebody and say, do I have to file? You don't have to. You want to because in your situation, this is a loophole where if you're retired uh, before your normal retirement age, then your pension is reclassified wages, and because it's wages and your income is so low, you'll get an earned income credit. So give us a call on Monday, and we'll be very happy to help you. Okay, Esther, thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Those are just one of the happy things. Oh, you know? very. When you, when you can help somebody get money that they that they didn't know that and they then, had. And then, of course, my mind is working. I wonder how long he was disabled how, because of statute of limitations is three years. Well, if it's three, three years, years, at least he can get <laughs> the money back for the last three years. Right. And that's a good thing. Right. Well, I'm Esther Goulias, the tax lady, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on the cell phone. We are um, we're going to be viewed on Tuesday. You can get some view us. Like, you know, on Boy. Tuesday at 6.30 on WBBZ. And uh, <clears throat> if you are watching on BBZ, this is a live radio show on w, um, WBEN BN. on Saturdays at 3 o'clock. So 9:30. you can call in or watch us on BBZ. And if you're in, in Naples, and Florida, only, we're at 1450 Airport Pulling Road. You've only been uh, doing this show for 15 years, right? Well, the radio show for yeah. 15 or 16 or 100 years. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, uh, we're, what we're going to do right now is we're going to be signing off from our TV show. And uh, we're going to take a short break. And we'll be back with your, your phone calls. Mark, Greg, Jack, Lisa. On the other side, I'm Mr. Goulias. Let me tell you how it will be There's yeah, one again. for you, 19 for me Hey, I'm Esther Goulias, the tax lady from EG Tax, and it's tax time. And um, we are every Saturday from 3 to 4 for the last umpteen years. But we're also, um, this this uh, radio show is being viewed on WBBZ Tuesday nights at 6.30. And for those of you in Naples, we are on... Um, We're on the radio show on W. Guff. Guff. On W. Guff on Saturdays at 4. Right. And we have an uh, office at 1450 Airport Pulling in uh, Naples, Florida, across from Tamiami Ford. And we'd love to help you with your tax return. And let's go to the phones. We have Greg, who's been so patient. Hey, Greg, how can we help you? Hi, Esther. I had a uh, stock in a dividend reinvestment program. Okay. And I slid it over to uh, Vanguard just to kind of consolidate everything. Okay. So how, how will I get treated on my taxes? Do I have to report that I did that, or does that just kind of happen automatically? No. Okay. See, now your broker has to keep track of. Has has your broker been keeping track of the basis, or have you, on all your dividend reinvestments, Greg? I have not done a good job of it, no. So I had the dividend reinvestment for, let's say, five or six years. And then uh, you know, it was with a pretty big, you know, dividend reinvestment program. All right. So, and this is not uh, in a, did, this is not in an IRA. This is strictly investments, correct? That's correct. All right. So, when you when you moved it from the one to the other, that was a sale. And a lot of times, people think that because they didn't get the money, that it's not taxable. But the truth is, when you when you liquidate and take it from one to another, it's going to be a taxable event. The good thing is. If you bought the stock five years ago, if you know what you paid for it, and you take a look at your last four years' tax returns, you're going to see what the dividends were. And if you didn't take them, you're going to increase what you paid for the stock by your reinvested dividends and come up with an adjusted basis. Then the difference between what your adjusted basis is and what you sold it for is going to be the gain. So the reinvested dividend should help you when you... File your oh, they return. Didn't tell me that it was gonna, they didn't tell me it was going to count as a sale. I didn't know it was going to get into a taxable no, if, event by if, doing that. You, you said you moved from one fund to another, correct? Yeah, just slid it, they just slid it over. They transferred all the stuff I know, but sliding from. it over is a sale. 
And a lot of times this is what happens with people. They don't think it's a sale. But the truth is, if you're no longer in that family of funds and you're now in another family of funds, you sold the old and got a new, and that's a taxable event. Uh, you'll, okay, you'll, be no, getting a, you'll be getting a 1099 form at the end of the year. Thank you, Esther. I appreciate it. Thank You're you. welcome, sir. Bye-bye. Let's see. We're going to go back to the phones and talk to Jack. Hey, Jack. How you doing? Uh, good afternoon, Esther. How you doing? Good. Uh, I got a tricky situation here. Okay. Um, I'm currently going through a divorce. Okay. I'm not legally divorced yet. Mm-hmm. And me and my wife both own the house. We're still legally married. We both own the house. And there's no mortgage on it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm assuming that the divorce will be finalized between now and probably the end of tax season. Mm -hmm. Uh, We use a certified public accountant. Mm -hmm. Should we basically do our taxes this year jointly, or should I talk to somebody like you and have you kind of like guide me through this? All right. Well, here's the thing. Um, You and you're working. Your wife is working, correct? Yes, correct. All right. So you have only two options because as of December the 31st, you were still legally married. So either, and, and you don't have children involved. Is that correct? No, we do have two children. Who is living in the home with the children? Okay, well, basically, I had purchased another home and um, I'm living by myself. When and did the you court move out? Hasn't, hasn't um, you know, settled on who would get uh, No, the question the is where do the children live? The children are with their mother right now. All right. When did you leave the house, Jack? Uh, October 16th. Of this year? Yes. All right. Now. No, of uh, 2015. All right. Uh, yeah, last year. I'm sorry. Um, here's the thing. She can't file head of the household because you were in the house after June. So that means she either has to file married joint or married separate. So what was the situation with the lady that had the son who hadn't lived with her husband for a number of years, that is not your situation. So your estranged wife would either be married filing joint or married separate. Now, with uh, it probably is going to be better for the two of you guys to file a joint return unless one or the other of you have large uh, miscellaneous itemized deductions. Like either, neither of you is an outside salesperson or has large medical bills, do you? No. You don't have daycare? No. Um, so probably, I mean, you really almost have to do it both ways. Are you paying alimony? Uh, not yet. No maintenance. Decided yet. No maintenance, right? Right. Okay. Have you guys decided who who's going to claim the children in the future? No. I guess uh, she's going to let me claim the kids because my daughter will be 18 tomorrow. My son will be 14 in June. Okay, so you want to make sure that when you're negotiating your divorce settlement that you get an 8332 signed by her so that now while you're with your attorneys and everything, it's all stipulated now who gets to claim the children. And that 8332 is the steering mechanism. That's what needs to be done. So if you want to call us, we'll send you the 8332. Um, okay, uh, Probably it. Mary Joint is going to be the best situation for you. And <laughs> relative to whether we should help you, Jack, I'd love to help you. Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, that's why, I'm, that's why I'm calling you because I'm totally confused. I would love, I, we would love to help you. We never... We always consider it an honor to help anybody. So think about it. We'd love to help you. We have offices all over. So, and uh, if you want myself or Tiffany, call or talk if, to you personally. Uh, yeah, I'm on Niagara Falls Boulevard in Amherst with Esther, and that right. would be a great place. Six three two seven eight eight six. And you can go to our website at egtax.com. And yeah, it shows... I was on there last night. So okay. okay, you're on Niagara Falls Boulevard in Amherst. Right. Okay, yeah, Jack. Always right. a call when I get more situated, and maybe I'll set up an appointment. With you all right. You good enough. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, let's see. We're going to go to Lisa. Hi, Lisa. How can we help you? Hi there. Just a question on something you said a minute ago mm-hmm. about a gentleman that should file, even if he doesn't think he should file right. because of the earned income credit. Right. Now, my mom, she certainly does not have a pension. In fact, all she gets is Social Security. Right. But because of that, she hasn't filed in forever. Right. Um, her, She has services come in because, obviously, the income is so low. Right. Does that qualify as well? Okay. So here's, you know, the... When you hear these politicians talk about how complicated tax law is, it is. Mm-hmm. But what I that particular gentleman qualified for a loophole. When you retire before normal retirement age, which would be 65, on a pension, and it's due to a disability, then that pension up till normal retirement age is reclassified as wages. Because he has earned income, that's what wages are, 
and right. it's lower income and he doesn't have children, he's he's entitled to a refund up to four hundred and eighty seven dollars um, for the earned income credit. But the only reason he'd qualify is because of the earned income that earned technically income. is a <clears throat> pension, but that he can reclassify because he was retired under a disability before normal retirement. And, age. and your Got mom it. who has Social Security doesn't fit that criteria. Right. And then also no. you have to be mm-hmm. less than the age of 65. Right. Right. And so your mom is probably older than 65, right? right? Yeah, she is now when she's she was younger, way younger than she should have been when she. Uh, but and then then the other bad news, still. Lisa, is you only have three years. The right. statute of limitations okay. is three years, so um, your mom would be unable. But, yeah. again, she just has the Social Security. Yeah, boy, our older people get stuck to the wall, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Now, does yeah. mom have a, a home? No. She, mm-hmm. she, she rents, right? Yeah. Okay, because what I was going to say, if she had a, a home, many times people that are in a home that's nearly paid for in order to help themselves out for – it, their their senior years would get what's called a reverse mortgage right right and, right right and right. effectively and effectively you get tax free income uh to live off of and you can never be uh taken out of your house so you don't have a house payment and they start paying you rather than you paying them so that's another thing for seniors right right okay? well, thank you so much you're welcome lisa take care bye I'm Esther Golias, the tax lady from EG Tax. All of our offices are open this week, starting this Friday. Right. 9 to 9, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 on Saturday. The only office that's open is the offices in the mall. Uh, and I believe that we're going to be moving across uh, the street in Niagara Falls in the to the Niagara, Niagara, Niagara Factory, Factory Outlet, Outlet. Yep. as well. Very exciting. Right. And let's go back to the phone. And 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on a cell phone, and we'll go back to the phones and talk to Mark. Hey, Mark, how can we help you? Hi, Esther. Um, I was divorced last year in May. Okay. And at that particular point in time, I started paying my ex wife maintenance. Uh huh. And I'm wondering if I need to give her any sort of tax form to indicate, because it's my understanding that uh, maintenance is considered income. Good question, Mark. And so the truth is, you don't have to give her any form. You just have to put it on your tax return as maintenance paid, and you have to indicate her Social Security number. And so the IRS so will they're find keeping her. Track. They will find her. So, <laughs> so you have to, okay. Yeah. So by you putting your ex's social security i mean her social security number on there and the amount they compare that against the tax return she files the only thing you have to do is put it on your tax return and you know of course it's an adjustment so whether you itemize or not uh it's it's an adjustment to income so it should cut your tax bill down okay uh the other question that i had was i have custody of our children and she just started like a month and a half ago paying child support Okay. Is child support considered income or not? Nope. Okay. So you're so getting the deduction for on my tax return then. Right. So you're getting the deduction for her. You're getting child support from her that's not taxable to you. Okay. Okay. Now let me ask you this: uh, How many kids are at home? Uh, three. Three children. And may I ask approximately what your income is? It's approximately about forty, forty-two thousand. All right. So you're going to qualify, and and you're working, correct? Yeah. All right. So you're going to, and do you have um, large investment income or, or not a lot, not a lot oh, of dividends? Oh, no. I have nothing like that. All right. <laughs> so you're going to qualify to be head of the household and okay. you're going to also be able to claim the children and get an earned income credit. Okay. So you would get an earned income credit provided your income is under $46,227. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a uh, good day. Thank you, sir. Okay, I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady, 8030930, 830930, star 930 on a cell phone. Our toll free number is 1 800 something or other. It's 1 800 616 9236. Right. Okay. We've got all those numbers floating around. I'll tell you. And then we're going to go to Springville and Jim. Hey, Jim, how can we help you? Uh, thank you for taking my call. Uh, we were renting a, a home, and uh, because of a, a flood that we had, we got displaced, and we're currently living in a hotel. Oh, my uh, gosh. And um, the uh, renter's insurance company has reimbursed us for uh, lost property. 
Mm-hmm. They're also reimbursing us for meals and lodging, mm-hmm. but there are deductibles. Mm-hmm. I'm just wondering what my ta- is if there's any tax liability for that. If they're going to call uh, any money that we get from the insurance company as income. No, no. The good news is not. No, no. The only thing I was thinking when you were saying this, there's something called a casualty loss on your tax return. And so I don't know if you're an itemizer, but it's tucked away under there. And so it has to super exceed 10% of your adjusted gross income. The but, loss has to be more than 10%. Right. But the good news is no, none of that income so has let, to be So let's just taxed. make sure that you don't have a deductible casualty loss, Jim. When did the casualty happen? Uh, it was two days before Thanksgiving, so late in November. All right. So here's the thing. Do you have any idea how much the value of your home has dropped prior to the well, flood and after well, the flood? Well, he said he was renting a home, so I was co- confused by that. No, no, you're not renting. It was your personal home, right? No, we rented. Oh, you rented. We were renting. Oh, okay. All right, so he doesn't have a casualty Probably loss not. except for your furniture, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Did what what do you think your the value of your items that were ruined in the uh flood were what was worth? Well, we were reimbursed uh, by the insurance company for about 5500 uh, and then there was a $500 deductible. All right. So, um, and that was the, that, and what do you feel that the, that the value. Uh, value was? I mean, was it valued at 25000 and they gave uh, you 5500 No, 5, that, uh, I think the, uh, it was replaced at about 50% value. All right, so is about ten thousand. So, so that means that you're out uh, about uh, four thousand dollars. May I ask what your income is approximately? Uh, disability retirement income and wages come to about forty thousand. All right, so they would take, like Tiffany said, ten percent of your just gross income off plus a hundred. So they'll take off four off of the four, so you don't you don't have a casualty. Right. But I wanted to make sure. But the okay. good news is, like you said, you don't have to declare that right. income that you got from the right. insurance company. And I'm sorry, when will you be relocated into a dry place? Uh, very soon. Oh, uh, well. Within a week or so. Wow. Well, can I ask what broke? I mean, how did you get flooded out like that? Uh, something uh, happened with the boiler that caused the radiators to uh, blow a gasket. Oh, my and, gosh. And uh, nobody was home to turn the water off. Oh, my so gosh. So basically the whole house is, was flooded. Wow. Well, Here's hope everything stays dry for you in 2016. Well, thanks. Thanks, Jim. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. I'm Esther Golias, the tax lady from EG Tax. We have 29 area offices to serve you in western New York. We have offices in Florida, offices in Arizona. If you ha- have any tax issues, even if you don't use us, make sure you call because it's very difficult, if not impossible, to get any information from the IRS, and we would love to help you because we certainly don't want you to overpay your taxes. And we're going to go back to the phones, and we're going to talk to Bob. Hey, Mr. Bob, how can we help you? Hi. Uh, I heard some news, something about a big change in Social Security, and uh, do you know about that? Because I'm on SSD, and I didn't know that there were going to be changes in April. Well, actually, if you take a look at the Social Security website, one of the big changes is that they're going to go from uh, branch offices offices. to they want to go more to uh, online services. Um, there, there's not uh, an increase this year in Social Security. Social Security definitely is having its financial problems, but there's nothing that I'm aware of that's any other kind of a big change into Social Security. That more well, people are, are getting Medicaid. Benefits? Not that, well, you know, I mean, can I say that they won't? Social Security is not what people think it is. They're really having bad financial troubles. That is not to make you worry because uh, it's you. It's really the younger people who who are working now that may not get Social Security as we know it. But you should be okay. Okay, because like I said, I've been on SSD since 2012. Now, you, are, course, who, who's working? Your, your wife? No, I'm single. So you had wages, you said? SSD. O- only SSD, no wages at all? No. All right, so um, you can call Social Security on Monday, and or if you want to call the office on Monday uh, at 632-7886, we'll go to the website together but at we Social have, Security. I but I will tell you, I just read it the other day, I didn't see anything. 
Okay. Okay. Well, Not- I was a little confused because I turned in late. I said, oh, my gosh, what's the big change is going to be? No, 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 not for, not, not for that. Don't worry about it, okay? All right, well, thank you All very right. much. Thanks, Thanks, Bob. Bob. I mean, Thanks for talking to me. All right, thank you, sir. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax. If you need uh, some great tax help for very reasonable fees, you can give us a call at any of our, our area offices. If you go to egtax.com, you'll see where all of our offices are. And, um, again, we just invite you, if you have any questions, whether it's on the radio show here, um, or uh, on WBEN Radio, if you if you uh, want to join us on Tuesday at 6:30 on WBBZ on Channel 5, you can watch us there. Uh, anytime, if you have a question, use us as a resource. You can email us your tax questions, and usually we get back to you in within a minute or two with an answer to a tax question. So don't you know? Don't worry and uh, wonder if something's deductible. You might be at dinner with somebody and say, "Gee, I think I'll go to EG Tax and and you can." T- Text me your tax question, and I'll get back to you right away, and I'm the one who answers the tax questions. Well, I think we ran out of time. Until next Saturday, I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady, with Tiffany Fabian from EG Tax. See you on Tuesday at 6.30 on WBBZ, and thanks for for listening. Bye-bye.